What is SQL Server Integration Services? Hey, welcome. I'm this guy right here. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what SSIS is, other than a really long name, which is why we have acronyms, right? And we call it SSIS. And a lot of people think that Integration Services is just this back-end ETL tool, ETL standing for Electronic Transformation and Load, tools that we use to take data from one system or one format it, scrub it, transform it, convert it into another system or another format. And it is that, but it's so much more. I like to call Integration Services my little back-end buddy. Only it's not so little anymore. Back when SQL Server was in version 7, this product called DTS came out, Data Transformation Services. That was the very first version of SSIS. And I thought, hey, this is pretty cool. I can automate some of my data processes. And then I got into it, learned a little more about it, and I realized, whoa, I can do a lot more than that. This is my window into the operating system. Anything I can do in the operating system in Windows, I can probably automate in SSIS. And that got me thinking, and before long, my resume had a heading on it that said Garth the Automator. <laughs> because with SQL Server Integration Services and DTS at my side, I, I didn't think there was anything I couldn't automate. And it turns out, that uh, that's pretty true uh, even more so with the new version in SQL Server 2012 there's so much that we can do uh, it'd be a challenge to find something that we couldn't do or couldn't automate with integration services so what are all these wonderful things we can do with integration services well as I mentioned it is an ETL tool first and foremost it allows us to import and export data to and from SQL Server we can work with your standard OLTP databases, which are your standard production online transaction processing databases. We can work with data warehouses and OLAP databases, online analytical processing databases, as we call them. And that's where it shines. Integration services shines with working with data in various formats. So we can work with your unstructured flat file data, your semi-structured XML data, to your fully structured relational data, such as Oracle. Not only that, but our back-end buddy is really a Swiss Army knife. That's really the best analogy this is for, because it is our Swiss Army knife in, in the SQL Server world. And the server world, really, because again, you can automate so many administrative tasks, your mind will be spinning by the time you realize all the things that you can do with integration services. We have full-blown access to the command line, which in itself is huge, because we could automate anything that you can do on the command line. Very cool. We have full-blown access to the file system. So anything you can do in the file system, we can access and automate inside of SSIS. We have access to the internet, so we can do things like tap into web services. We can tap into anything HTTP related. We can tap into the cloud. We can access and do anything in Azure. We can do things like work with Amazon Web Services. I actually recently worked with an S3 project, which is Amazon's simple storage service that allows us to put data uh, up on their servers and also read data from their servers. Data, objects, anything you can think of. As we mentioned here, we can do anything in the OLTP world, your standard production databases. We can do anything in the OLAP world when dealing with data marts and data warehouses and working with cubes and multidimensional data. We have full-blown access to the .NET engine, so we can write code in C-sharp or VB.NET if we need to. We also can do any kind of administrative tasks, both in SQL Server and outside of SQL Server. So the sky's the limit with our back-end buddy. And the best part of it all is it's really easy to work with. We have this nice graphical designer you drag things into a designer, you set some properties, you can connect tasks together. It's a lot like create, it's a lot like, you know what it is? It's a lot like uh, a dynamic, it's a workflow that's animated. It's, it's like building a flowchart, only it actually does stuff. <laughs> it's like a flowchart that's alive. So it's not only fun to work in, but it's really cool to watch. When you hit the play button and you watch all your tasks light up, you know, they're yellow when they're processing, they're red when they fail, and they're green when they're successful. And you can kind of like, it's like watching a flow chart in action. It's very cool and it's very fun to work with. Some of the major components we'll be working with in SSIS are connections. Connections allow us to do things such as set up a source and a destination if we're working with data. For instance, you could designate a source as a SQL Server database, a destination as maybe a flat file or an XML file. And that would mean we're exporting data from our SQL Server database to our flat file. We can also set up connections to a file system, maybe a directory on a file system, and then we can reference that directory anytime we need to use it. We can set up an SMTP connection, so all of our email tasks will then use that SMTP connection to send emails through. We can set up FTP connections. So anytime we use an FTP task or an SFTP task, we can send data through that connection or read data from that connection. And then we have tasks. Tasks are the heart and soul 
of SSIS. These are really our workflow components. So we have things like data flow tasks. This is the big task that you'll be working with if you're moving data around or scrubbing data or transforming data. There's a lot of tasks inside of this task that we'll use to move data, merge data, transform data, as I mentioned, convert data, you know, merge data, sort data. I mean, the, the list goes on and on, but there's a lot of tasks inside of here that you'll use for scrubbing and working with data. We also have SQL tasks. If we want to just simply run a SQL statement against the database, we can set up a SQL tasks, do things like run a stored procedure or, you know, run just a basic query, all kinds of stuff here we can do with the SQL task. We have scripting tasks. We have a process task if we need to shell out a process outside of SSIS or outside of SQL Server. And then we have file system tasks. We're working with files on the file system. Everything from creating files to deleting files to moving files to copying files. We also have access to events. And events give us a chance to do something when they occur. So, you know, if we handle the on error event, for instance, and we have a data flow task that comes across a data conversion error, well, the on error event for that task will fire, and then we can handle the event by putting more tasks inside of here. So maybe we put a file system task that takes the error and logs it into a file. Or maybe we put an email task inside of the on error event that sends us an email when that error occurs with some information inside of that email. We also have things like on progress, on pre-execute, on post-execute. So events could occur in the case of on error, or you know it's a matter of when they will occur in things like on progress, on pre-execute, and on post-execute. So these just give us a chance to do something while the task is executing. We also have variables and parameters. And these are just temporary storage areas that we can use. When it comes to variables especially, one of the popular usages for these is a lot of times you'll have a configuration file where you'll store things like connection strings, you know, uh, directory locations and things like that. That way you can change these things while your package is deployed and you won't have to edit your package, change all the values on all your connections, and then redeploy your package anytime you want to switch from, you know, a, a development environment to a production environment. You can do it by changing the configuration file. So when these packages load, they read from the configuration file, they store their data inside of variables, which is what we then use inside of the package. So that's SQL Server Integration Services, our back-end buddy in a nutshell. Uh, if you want to play with this on your own, fire up SQL Server Data Tools in SQL Server 2012 or Business Intelligence Development Studio in any version prior to SQL Server 2012 and get familiar with SSIS. It's a lot of fun to use, it's easy to use, and uh, just drag some tasks onto the form and go to town. I hope this has been informative for you, and I thank you for viewing.